Hello. Hi. I'm Sean. And I'm Erica. And we're here to talk about rational and irrational numbers. But I mumble, so <laughs> no longer will we say irrational. We're going to call them crazy numbers. So from now on in this video, when we say crazy, we're talking about irrational numbers. And here's the idea. You start with a number, any number you want. One of two things is going to happen. In the first case, in the rational case, you can make a simple fraction. Eric, do you want to give an example of a simple fraction? Like anything that's like a rational fraction? Sure, how about um, one-fourth? Cool. Uh, I'll throw a one-third in there. Hmm. How about another one? How about two-sixths? I'm going to put negative two-sixths. All right. Now these are all simple fractions because um, each of them have a numerator or a denominator that's an integer. And Erica, do you want to say what an integer is? Sure. Integers are our whole numbers and their opposites. So integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Oh, okay, so you're saying like here, this is negative 2, but that's still an integer because it's like an opposite of 2. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so each of these are called rational. And we could turn them into simple fractions. And then there's the crazy numbers. Crazy numbers can't be written as fractions, like pi or the square root of 2, or do you want to give some more? Hmm. Well, what about 22 over 7? Oh, good one. Pretty close to pi. But again, I think like you said, that's a simple fraction, so we can put mm. that up here but pretty clever. Although I could write a fraction like this. This is not a simple fraction because, well, do you want to explain why? Well, because it looks like a fraction, but the numerator is the square root of 3. Ba, ba, ba. And the square root of 3 is irrational or crazy. It certainly is. So, so we have these two kinds of numbers. Either you can turn them into fractions or not. So I guess we should tell our students that anytime they get a question from us and they see a fraction, can they say it's rational? Yes. That's right. As soon as they see a fraction, they should know any fraction written down, any one at all, is rational, as long as it's one integer over another. And that's it. There's a little bit more to it, so I'm going to clear the board. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So the next thing is, like, sometimes they don't start with a fraction. They start with a decimal. Mm. So one of two things has to happen in order for a decimal to turn into a fraction. The first one is it terminates. Do you want to explain what that means? Uh, I think terminates just a, a fancy word for it ends or stops. So if it terminates, it stops. It doesn't go on and on forever. I was sad to find out that many students have never seen The Terminator and did not know what a Terminator is. It is a great <laughs> movie, I agree. Um, so this fraction ends. So I this decimal ends, and that means I could turn it into a fraction. And you just said that fractions, simple fractions, are rational. This is just going to be 1, 2, 3 over, well, a 1 with 1, 2, 3 zeros. And that's like a quick way to turn any decimal into a fraction, and that's irrational. Let's try one more like this. I'm going to use blue. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Do you want to tell us, Erica, how to turn this one into a fraction? Hmm, okay. So I think what we would do is we'd count the number of digits that we have, and I say one, two, three, four. So I know I'm going to put on the denominator on the bottom, I'm going to put a one, followed by four zeros, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to write that number, all those four digits, in order on, in the numerator on the top, one, four, one, five. Okay, so if they see a decimal, no matter how funky it looks, if it ends at some point, our students like Derek will know right away it's going to be rational, you know? They know right away. But sometimes it's a little bit trickier, and we're not going to get into it too much today, but like, let's say I have 1, 4, 2, and it's repeating. This is a repeating decimal, and it can still be turned into a fraction, which means it's rational. And this one's actually just as easy. It's a little different. You just go like this, you draw a line, and I see a 1 and a 4 and a 2, so I put 1, 4, 2 up here, and down here, I just put three nines. And they could test this out. If they did 142 divided by 999, you'll get 142, 142, 142, 142. So if you want to turn a repeating decimal into a fraction, 
you use the digits, and then beneath it, you just use that number of nines. Okay. Let's try one more. Okay. Okay, I'll write over here. I don't know why I drew an arrow like that. <laughs> All right, let's try, <laughs> let's try one. Point one four five repeating. Erica, do you want to tell us how to turn that into a, a fraction? Sure. So first I would draw my, my fraction line or my fraction bar. And then I see a 1, a 4, and a 5. So I'm going to write 1, 4, 5 on the top. And then I know there's three digits, so I'm going to put that many 9s on the bottom. So three 9s. 9, 9, 9. And I think I'm done. Thanks, Erica. Now there's one last thing, because our class is falling asleep. But the last thing is the crazy decimals. Crazy decimals are really hard to write. In fact, you can't really write them. Do you want to tell us why, Erica? Well, because they go on and on and on forever. And since they don't terminate or stop, it would be really difficult to sit and write an irrational decimal because it just keeps going. Now, on the state test, which is kind of dirty and cheap, but they write stuff like this. They'll write like 1, 5. They'll make up like a random sequence, and they'll put a dot, dot, dot. So our students should know that they're trying to say, here's a decimal that goes on forever without a pattern. But one of my students asked a good question. They're like, well, how do you know that like a thousand places later, a pattern doesn't form? And that's a good question. And in fact, we don't, that's why we never usually write it like this. But in the state test, we've got to recognize if you see a bunch of digits that have no pattern and then a dot, 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 that's crazy or irrational. Other than that, Erica, do you want to give us like some standard examples of numbers they give? for crazy irrational numbers? Sure. Well, I know one trick that they try to give us is they'll, they'll write the pi symbol. Um, and then they'll also write 3.14. And that's, and that's, that's actually rational. Yeah, I think they try to trick us because when we think of pi, we always estimate it and think of 3.14. So when we see 3.14 on the test, we automatically think of pi. We think it's irrational. But on the test, they'll sometimes just write 3.14, and that by itself is a rational number. I'm glad you brought that up because, in fact, 3.14 does not go on forever. So you can tell it's got to be rational. I guess the other thing is that crazy decimals, this is our last thing before our students die of boredom, have no repeating pattern. So, so pi is like a weird number because, because it goes on forever and there's no repeating pattern, but it does have patterns. You should be careful on that one. Like if I wanted to find my social security number or my birthday or my phone number, it's all there in pi because it has so many numbers, but none of it repeats. So anyway, going back to all the stuff we just said, let's go back to the beginning. Oops. I don't know where anything went. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, okay. Well, rational numbers, just to repeat, is a number that can be written as a simple fraction. But a crazy number can't be written as a fraction. And our job is to try and figure out which numbers can and can't be written as fractions. That's it. Thanks, Erica. Good job.